All right, everybody. Hello, it's Cheryl Lawson. Welcome to the post SM Tulsa conference hangout. We did a few uh, leading up to the conference, and now uh, the conference hangover <laughs> hangout. <laughs> <laughs> the hangover hangout is what we're calling this. Welcome to Ms. Becky McRae and Lori Rottmeyer is joining us. Hey, ladies. Hello, hello. Hola. <laughs> So um, we were kind of talking before we went live. This is the first live hangout for the all-new SM Tulsa YouTube channel. Yay! Yay. My... Well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so until just this 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 week, uh, you know, any YouTube stuff had been on my uh, Party Aficionado YouTube channel, where I misspelled Party Aficionado. And so, <laughs> so it was very difficult to tell people to go to the page. So I was using Vimeo for social media Tulsa videos, and that's great, except that's just one more place to put a video, and uh, I find that the SEO and all that good stuff is just better on Google and YouTube. So there we are. There we are. Here we are all together. Here we are all together. And I just sent out an email to everybody who attended. Uh, Lori, um, they'll have access to all the videos. So you, by uh, default, and because you're an insider, will have access to all the videos from the conference <laughs> from last <laughs> week. Because <laughs> you are an SM Tulsa insider, or anybody Ooh. in the world who might be watching this right now. Now, Lori was present in spirit at the event. She was not actually able to be there in person, but we did manage to get a picture of her up on the screen, at least. We did. I tweeted her that she was she was in the house. I told Nikki you'd make us famous. I, yeah, and like I said, I'm just riding on your fame. That's the whole reason I put your picture up there, is so I can ride on your fame. Yeah. Everybody's like, oh my goodness, she Becky McRae knows Lori Rottmeyer. How is this possible? <laughs> And that photo, that photo has appeared on marketingprofs.com, I'm saying. I saw that. Lori's everywhere. <laughs> and when I yep. saw it, I went, I'm so mad that I didn't get a chance to come to the liquor store. You know, all I you have know. to do is come to and Alva. Two. Say it again? Read the whole thing, Becky. Moose oh, the Moose and Booze, booze the whole Moose uh, and Booze tour. Yeah, there's um, Jonathan uh, Fields. Jonathan Fields, uh, one of the premier authors in the area of uh, develop your life the way you'd like to have it, came up with the idea of moose and booze, that that was the perfect summary for the fact that I have liquor store, a liquor store and I have cattle. And so it is now called the Moose and Booze Tour if you come to Alva. And I do this only for a select few friends. Very few people have done it. Um, John and Nancy Swanson from Indiana have done it. Uh, Lori and Nikki came over and did it. Um, Star Gardener came up from Oklahoma City. Uh, let's see, who else has been on the list? Jeff Pulver and Alan Weinkrantz came from uh, New York and Texas, respectively. Uh, Sheila Scarborough was actually the first. She came up from Texas and, and was the first to visit the liquor store. But if you get to visit the liquor store and you get to go down to the, the farm and visit the cattle, that's the Moose and Booze Tour. Fantastic. Well, I know that I'll have to uh, probably rent a car because the Miata and Dirt Roads do not... Oh, I don't make you drive down the dirt roads in your own car. Oh, okay. <laughs> We have, we have pavement and everything. We are uptown. Okay. I'm just like, the Miata and Dark Roads, I could just see us push. Somebody go get a cow. <laughs> no, no. I take you in the farm truck to the farm. Uh, you can drive yourself to the liquor store. It's on a state highway. Oh, everything right. is fine. But... Yeah, yeah. You know, for the cattle, then we all get together in the farm truck and go down. For the that moose, way. for the moose part, we go to the. For the moose part, we we carpool, we truck pool. Fantastic. <laughs> well, so uh, Becky, since you were uh, an attendee slash keynote slash all things social media, tell us so what were your impressions about last week, and you can be honest. My impressions about last week. You know, I go, I have gone to a lot of events in the social media industry, the tech industry. I go to, I've been to Blog World Expo, I don't even know how many times. I've been to South by Southwest Interactive, uh, SobCon, which is, which is big in some circles. Uh, I've been to a number of 140 conferences, 
all over the world. And I can tell you, no conference does as good of a job as Social Media Tulsa about making it feel like you've walked into a friend's living room. And we're, yeah. we're all sitting around uh, and we're free to have conversations. We connect and it feels so much more friendly and connected than probably any other event I've been to. 140 Conference has a sense of community, but the the event itself is one person on stage and and in a in a theater style, and it's all very much theater. Yours is always arranged in such a way that people can find the place that feels comfortable for them. Everyone can exchange information. I don't think there's any other event that does as good of a job about that as what you do with Social Media Tulsa's conference. Wow. Well, thank you for that. And I'm, you know, it's it's important to me. And and I'll tell you that uh, uh, Wednesday night I was rearranging chairs. <laughs> it happened. I walk in the room and they did a really good job of having different kind of seating because right. my idea is I I definitely want people to have a choice to sit where they feel comfortable. Uh, and also to have access to step away if they need to, right? To just, you know, there were standing tables this year. I, this is the first time I did standing tables, which, you know, I learned last year uh, from one of the people who sent stuff for the goodie bags about the whole standing and standing office situation <laughs> that, uh, you know, sometimes people need to stand up anyway. And you find that in conferences and events where people will just go to the back of, room, back of the room and stand. So I thought, well, why don't I give them something to stand in front of and lean on and put their devices on? And so, uh, so I was rearranging uh, tables and chairs and <laughs> things Wednesday because you can you can tell a facility about flexible seating and unique seating, but you know they're not necessarily used to. You know, hey, we want this to be a, a social setting for a business type event, so. I thank you for noticing that, and uh, I do work hard to to make that happen. But a lot of it has to do with the people who walk in the door. It's it's the it's the folks who sit and and the people who are members of our meetup group, right? Because they're used to just saying, "Oh, well, that's just Cheryl," right? And I try to make sure you know, that's just Cheryl. It's not like you know there's anybody on that stage that I can't talk to and. And I, I think that's on purpose, right? I don't necessarily want to bring people in that are that are not going to be friendly to my community, right, and our community. So, I thought Marty's session on photography was also very good. It's something that that we all kind of take for granted. A lot of people in the social space or photography have uh, nuts, and okay. so uh, the idea that we just kind of take for granted photography and and he made a really great point about how we all tend to take for granted our avatars a little bit and especially for people that are new to social media they just kind of grab a photo mm -hmm. any old photo sometimes they stick with the old egg if they're on Twitter or they have, <laughs> have no photo or they um, he used some great examples of you know the uh, the photo where you're standing and there's somebody else's arm around you because <laughs> you've been cut out of a group photo um, there's uh, the overly casual photos and, and thinking about what image each photo projects. Um, mm -hmm. the, the avatar that I use on Twitter right now is a picture that was taken in the wheat field behind my house uh, by my husband, you know, but I, I deliberately chose to do that about sunset so we had some nice sunset light. Um, I gave him the good camera to work with and, and you know, did everything we could to try to make me look good, but uh, you can still you don't have to have a lot of equipment. You don't have to be great, but if you if you will think about the kind of image you're trying to portray, uh, and make sure that the image, the photo then that you select, actually is in harmony with the image you're trying to project. And I am sure that Lori will will hold us out that your image matters. Lori is, is the aficionado of all things glam. I think that's why. <laughs> You, you've been now turned to. <laughs> and, and this, her bottom third is pink and everything. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I did write about that in my book. The very same thing you were just talking about is, you know, your picture is really important because that's what, you're, that's what people think about you. And I'll never forget the first time I went to a tweet up 
and I was going to introduce myself to Glennis Crawford. I said, hi, I'm, she's like, hi, Lori, how are you? And I was like, whoa, she knows me. It's important and it's cool. I get, I get a lot of the are you Cheryl's, uh, you know, out and about, especially because, you know, if I'm checking in on Foursquare everywhere, I was at uh, the penthouse bar at, at the Mayo prior to us being there for the conference, and this lady brings over her phone, and she's she's got Foursquare on her phone, and my picture is everywhere, and she says, is this you? <laughs> Busted. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> And uh, so, it, so it's really interesting. And then, you know, the photos that I have on my uh, Twitter account, both Party Aficionado and SM Tulsa Cheryl, came from one photo shoot. I need, in fact, I needed a photo for the Vocus thing that they did for me, and it was kind of a highlight of um, how I had used their product. And they said, "Well, you know, can you send us a headshot?" And uh, Okay, <laughs> I didn't have one, and so my uh, brother's ex-wife's sister is a photographer. <laughs> if that's not a small town thing, I don't know what is. So, so I called her. I had a cold. Went down to her studio, and I just told her, you know, first I had to then find clothes to wear for a photo shoot, right? Uh, so, uh, well, what's your style? I went to Saks and. And I said, well, my style would be, and Laura, you probably, I should have counseled you on this. I said, sort of rock star geek. <laughs> <laughs> Which is an entire category at Saks. <laughs> uh, you just see the lady at, at uh, Saks Fifth Avenue, she was a little confused. <laughs> He was like, oh, she knew rock star, and I think she probably had an idea about geek. But... <laughs> Rockstar geek, she was not real sure about, and then and and she commenced to pulling a um anim, a leopard print uh, little onesie, and I thought, okay, maybe I'm not communicating. <laughs> I don't know what that is, right? She might. Yeah, the the geek thing just takes the rock star down a notch in terms of the leopard print level. Exactly. <laughs> So uh, I found something to wear, and this, and and then Denise, who is a great photographer, I found out, figured out because uh, I said I wanted to be like I'm at a party, hence the party aficionado and all that stuff, and uh, she was able to figure out that the only way that I smile other than talking <laughs> was when I laugh. So she just kept making me laugh over and over and over. And she did the, oh, you know, somebody's walking in. And I did the little pose to my chest because I do that anyway. And that that was the picture that, that stuck to everybody. So now I'm afraid to change it because that those pictures were so good and they're everywhere. I need to change mine. You've said that, though, since I've, since I've met you because you had the yeah. glam. You had the glam. No, really only since last year I really want to change it. I want it to look less perfect. Like oh, I you know, I have a I have this small problem with all those pictures I have that are nice and professional from two years ago now, and some of them are much older than that with the short hair, and so I I have to replace all my photos. And so there's intermediate photos in between with all those awkward growing out stages, which are lovely to have around. Um, <laughs> nice reminders that my hair looks oh so nice while growing out. Um, so I have Everybody. to. Now that it's down to a reasonable length, I need to. Um, I need to get updated shots done. Um, last year, I kept saying as soon as it greened up, I was going to have photos done. As soon as the farm greens up, as soon as it uh -huh. rains, and, and then, then it didn't. Happen. It didn't happen. So we didn't have any new photos last year. So next year, this year, hopefully, with my now that my hair is longer, maybe we'll get some rain and um, we'll have some green Cross fingers. We did, yeah. Whatever you can do, um, yeah. We will. Uh, <laughs> we will hope for rain. Hope and pray for rain. Is that's been my theory so far. It hasn't been very effective, but that's what I have available to do. Time to dance, Becky. Huh? It's time to dance. Uh -huh. Rain dance. Seriously. So uh, one thing I liked about Marty's. What, what's interesting about that, and this is a little behind the scenes, and nobody kind of knew unless you were there and saw the change, but. Marty was supposed to do his talk in the penthouse, and I, I purposely wanted him to be in that space just because it was so unique, and that people could go out on the pa on the balcony and take photos. And that, that was because Marty's 
a great artist and the Napkin Dad story is great and we've heard it but what a lot of people don't know is Marty's an excellent photographer as well. Definitely. And, and is a member of a huge uh, photography meetup group uh, here in Tulsa. So I wanted him to showcase this side of his creativity and we were going to have it up on the rooftop because I thought, oh, it'd be great to, sh to have all these photos of the skyline and buildings and you can see the river bed. <laughs> it's not a river. <laughs> you can see the river bed from the rooftop. But we couldn't get his equipment to work with the televisions up there because he was using a Mac and they're very PC based there. And so, so we had to switch it to the Mayo Museum, the room downstairs. And then he had the whole lobby to you, which, and that actually turned out much better because people then w were outside and taking pictures of that beautiful staircase and, you know, into that Mayo Museum where all the pictures of people who stayed in the hotel for, I mean, the pictures turned out smashing from, from that session. So it just goes to show you, you know, don't stress over the small stuff because it's all going to, if you've got the people that have the talent, they're going to be able to do their thing wherever you, wherever you put it. So, I thought that was fun. Lori, did you? Uh, you got to follow on Twitter, though. Hopefully, you got to see some of the hashtags, hashtag stuff. I didn't see a whole lot because we were moving. Oh, that's right. That's right. I saw yeah. your, your boxes. Uh, your oh box. dear. <laughs> <laughs> boxes oh and boxes and boxes. Yeah. I don't think it would ever end. Well, I, you know what? I've moved a few times, and it's not. It's well, it's it's fun once you're finished with this part. <laughs> All right, so uh, I can't believe you didn't mention the photos that I took of you, Cheryl. I d I didn't, but you know what? I have posted them everywhere because I absolutely love those. Photos. <laughs> I caught I caught Cheryl at one of those moments. She was standing at one of the little standing tables that she had created with her tablet there, and she's just blotty blotty blowing away there on her little tablet and I look over and I catch her and she's like very seriously intent in it so I take her picture and then she realizes I'm taking her picture so then she starts aping for the camera and she does the little duck lips and she does a little funny face and I took all those pictures and then she finally smiled for me because she got to laughing which is the only time that Cheryl gets a really great smile is when we make her laugh so um, and then I was I you know sometimes you get a good picture of somebody and you say this is going on a billboard because it'll be, it's worth it but I um, I thought you know I might as well be nice so I just emailed them to Cheryl and said here you can do with these what you want you do not have to put the duck lips up if you don't want to share the duck lips so and I did I posted them all and I actually made little captions in fact one of them I said what's the Wi-Fi code right because we were struggling <laughs> yes we had Wi-Fi wi there, there are two there are two types of conferences. There are the tech conferences where they, they arrange for Wi-Fi, but we crash it because there's too many of us on the Wi-Fi with all of our devices. And then there are the non-tech conferences and they don't even arrange for Wi-Fi and they go, oh, did you want some, did you think Wi-Fi? We didn't, we didn't think about Wi-Fi. We didn't know anyone would want to use it. So there's never Wi-Fi. That's just the, the way that I plan for conferences now. <laughs> well, and you know what? We over planned for Wi-Fi. Yeah. Yeah. And it, we didn't have Wi-Fi. So that was, and in fact, I had just talked to a bunch of event planners about Wi-Fi at, at meetings and how you have to be careful and never trust the hotel's Wi-Fi, always have a backup, because we've got a backup, and our backup didn't work. <laughs> well, it didn't work fully. I mean, we did use their system to stream and and uh, so everybody, so all the video stuff and all the live stream worked in their system. But it was it was funny, and and then and the good thing about it was how everybody just accepted it and moved on. I mean, yeah. there were a few grumblings, but th that was really a testament to the group too. It's like, hey, stuff happens, and I think it was great to see the you know the Verizon rep just really working her butt off to figure it out. I mean that you know had they not been there doing that who knows what the tweets would have been but uh, I think it shows when people see hey there's effort here people are doing the best they can then I think the the uh, the, the jeers are 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 not going to be there so that's good.
So I've been kind of obsessed with Storify since the conference. I know you've probably seen me. <laughs> she has a Storify <laughs> obsession. So, you know, I it's overwhelming after you go come from a conference like this is that you have now you have photo, you have video, you have people asking for presentations, you have sponsors to deliver results to. Like here's what happened and uh, what I the first thing I did was create a Storify for the Gola bags because theirs was kind of a last minute, you know, they weren't oh, even yeah. going to do this. And I thought, well, let me get a Storify to show them the pictures we took and w the tweets that came out. And they actually tweeted back and forth with a few people. And then I thought, well, wait a minute, I need to do this for Verizon. <laughs> and then I need to do this for, you know, I did it for all of the, and then I did it for Sheila because she got the car and I thought, let me show them you know, what kind of traffic she got. And I thought, well, Becky had a lot of tweets and her book and signing the book. So everybody's getting a story. And I thought, well, this is better than me trying to write a post-conference blog post about things. I'll just find the individual stories that came out of the conference, like the massage therapist, like the, you know, the after party and the, you know, all of the things that happened during the conference that were their own individual stories and I'll just storify them and those will be my blog posts. <laughs> those will be my I, blog posts. That is such a good idea. I'm writing that down for the next time that I'm involved with a conference. The idea of doing one for each sponsor so they can see not just that you tell that they were appreciated, but that you show. Here is the individual appreciation that came. Because not every sponsor is just sitting around breathlessly waiting to see what input they're getting back from an event. Or maybe like Verizon nationally, they're sponsoring a lot of events at any given right. time. So, so to be I able to show them and give them one thing that they can say, okay, well, for Social Media Tulsa, we had these results. And here are the people that were very excited about it and the photos. And the Gola bags. I those were very well received. People were all over those. Mm -hmm. And see, they were you know that was kind of a last minute deal, and so I wanted to make sure. And I mean, they sent a lot of stuff, so uh, I wanted to make sure that they saw how excited people were and how we had them displayed, so that everybody got a chance to see what what they were. And and uh, I've already stuffed all my. Uh, my PayPal and my Square Up things that always I can't find in my purse are in that little <laughs> Gola uh, phone case. And uh, I'll get one to you, Lori, because they're really cute. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, so I thought this, and I did one for Verizon, and I did the TweetReach app. TweetReach app gives you like how, how far your t tweets reached. So there was a if you just do SM Tulsa, it'll tell you that two hundred nine that tweets from SM Tulsa reached two hundred ninety eight thousand accounts, and for a company that's not interested in small, at least I don't think they are, you've got to show them that small still is impactful and almost more so than big conference, and right. um, so I was able to do. Tweets mentioning SM Tulsa and Verizon Wireless reached 77,000 accounts from 100 people in attendance. So, you know, had we done bigger, had we done something else, maybe we'd do more, but you've got to be able to show them you know, how, how this is why you sponsor a social media or tech type conference. Because <laughs> we all talk about every single thing, everything we talk about. <laughs> the goodies we get, the stuff we get, everything. Absolutely. So, oops. Oops. What? No. No mistakes. <laughs> what are you I, saying oops there? <laughs> I, I'm using a mouse because I cannot stand the trackpad on my new computer. I will not name a brand. But uh, the trackpad is... Um, is it goes kind of rogue? <laughs> it just kind of. Oh, I have one things. like that. Really? A rogue trackpad. Okay. <laughs> oh, I have to use a separate keyboard because I can't use the keyboard because it's yeah. If you're all typing, related. yeah. If you're typing and then all of a sudden, yeah. <laughs> Deleted stuff. You've opened web page. <laughs> <laughs> How did I get here? I don't even know what that is. Oh my god. <laughs> So I did talk to the the hotel about the sound system yesterday when I returned and 
kind of let them know that was something we needed to to be concerned about if we're going to do that again. And of course, you know, I let them know that that we blamed it on the ghost, but what was more <laughs> the ghost. <laughs> But what was more telling was, you know, that that nobody seemed to have the answer, right? That, hey, exactly. things happen, right? Things happen. Uh, you need a new battery, whatever. But you know, there in in most cases, there's somebody that can come down and save the day, and that just wasn't the case. So I, I'm sure they're looking into to that, but. Um, Right. After you've exhausted all of the tricks that they know to improve the sound and the ways that they know to take care of the problem, and they're still a problem, then right. then that's an issue. Um, yeah. You know, and I, I watched speaker after speaker try to figure out a way to make that work and find the sweet spot and hold to it, and it just it just wasn't there. And so it, you know, people just backed up and said things again, and so you work around it, but it's something that you would rather have work correctly yeah. Yeah. So, so, everybody would like to have that and the other thing is you know like where there where there curtains are a big deal to close the curtains to, to adjust the light for the screen you know if they know that a, a, a conference is going to be there with a screen then they need to come in and close those curtains you know what and I think um, who was it Verizon said they had an event there and they moved the stage over to the side Mm -hmm. So they didn't use that that big stage and that oh, might it's be a beautiful setting it's such a beautiful setting I know. Lovely room. I don't, room. Even, I don't even know if closing those curtains would help, just because the way the room is set up. I, I don't know. It would yeah. be too dark if you close them all, and then. But we'll, we're we're going to have to adjust. We're just going to have to work with it ahead of time. But it would have been nice to know. Hey, if you're going to have slides up here. Yeah. yeah, I've decided that I just need to go through my slide deck and and boost the contrast significantly on a bunch mm -hmm. of those photos so that even if it if they show with you know kind of dodgy light that they'll they'll be easier to see because if you had super high contrast they were much easier to see so right. anything that was just kind of a little contrast like I had a photo of two different crops together to show plant multiple crops for your business to to, right. to harvest um, but there wasn't enough contrast between those two tones so I just need to boost the contrast on everything yeah. crazy because yeah. I actually spoke in Oklahoma City earlier in the week and had the same issue so it's not just you <laughs> yeah so I mean I get it I get it so I I don't know I love the location I think you know it worked for us and so for next year you know I'll, I'll, we'll have to just kind of work those bugs out but what do you think about going back to the Mayo? you've been to both the Hyatt and the Mayo what would if you had to choose between those two not to say that they're in the third oh Tulsa's full of hotels. My goodness, they're everywhere. Um, they are, but they're not all Tulsa. You know, I okay. So I, what I don't want people to do is come to Tulsa and go to a place that they could they could be anywhere. Right. right? Absolutely. So I think the the Mayo gives a better job of does a better job of being something special to Tulsa. Mm -hmm. um, I think that both of them had a a. A welcoming attitude that was very good that both of them seemed pleased to have the event there um, and I think that that matters I think that matters um, I'm trying to remember I remember the great fire drill last year and I remember but I don't remember any problems with the facility I remember I'm, I'm trying to think if there was anything about the the facility that was a problem or that was a you know well maybe a little bit better but they both I think they did equally well you know neither one of them was like oh my god we have to go back there right. uh, but I think that they both have done a fairly good job they really have I mean it's a tough thing to try to you know you're already trying to run a hotel day to day and then we have you know crazy rock star geeks who think that they need you know special rock star geek treatment and that could be an issue exactly <laughs> and, how many, and how many people told you know we're tweeting that the Mayo should be tweeting more and I, I got a handwritten note today saying that they that they are going to work on it. Thank we don't want a handwritten note, we want a tweet. That's all I we know. want. It's just a tweet I, that says, gosh, it was great to have social media Tulsa in the house. That's I it. It's not hard. Notes that were very personal and mentioned Twitter specifically, one in my room saying have fun tweeting and then one today and I thought, okay. We gotta They're trying. They're they're trying to work up to it. Some people need to build up some courage to put that forward. So you know, and I actually have I have my card from the Mayo right here. This is okay. this is from Shelby. Uh, okay. So 
I thought I would drop Shelby a little note and say that I, I enjoyed the hotel. Thought the room was very nice. They have the best sheets of any hotel I've been in in a long time. Lovely. Um, thought they had lovely sheets. Um, nice rooms and how much we appreciated their hospitality in that beautiful ballroom. That ballroom is just lovely. They've done a great job of putting it into. Uh, make it a place that you'd like to go and sit for a meeting because it feels with those windows on both sides I mean that's one of the things that really helps it be not you know we're locked in this windowless conference room where everyone will be tormented by hours of you know death by PowerPoint and instead it's bright and open and you have some connection to the outside uh, and then of course you you insist that all the speakers not do death by PowerPoint so right, right. <laughs> everybody has to do a good job and so those right. two things together make a difference. It's interesting. We saw a couple of, uh, I think, two or three Prezi presentations this year, mm -hmm. which was very interesting. I, you know, I've tried Prezi before. I, it's just too much for me to, it's almost, it always feels like I'm learning as I go, even though I've used it a few times. It always feels like I'm, I'm just kind of playing with it. So I, I think the people who used it did a great job uh, using Prezi. So I'll, I'll I, have to I haven't found a, a good topic where I think that the Prezi itself will add to the meaning and enhance mm -hmm. people's ability to learn or connect with the information. I always, at every topic I've looked at doing with it, it has felt more like it's going to be a distraction or it's going to pull people out of the information instead of helping them get into it. If, when I find the right topic that's got the right visuals, I think I'll, I'll be interested in doing it again. But um, the other thing is my brain is, is linear. My brain mm -hmm. goes in order. Mm -hmm. and or it goes this way if you are looking at reversed video and so for me to to zoom around doesn't work as well with my brain it's for Sheila or like Mandy Vavranek for Sheila Scarborough or Mandy Vavranek I think both of them you know their brain goes in a bunch of directions at the same time and so Prezi suits their brain style better but you know I organize things you know one two three four five um, and so Prezi always feels like it's gonna be more of a barrier than something that enhances the, the topic. But uh, someday I'll find the right topic. Yeah, I have a little self-diagnosed ADHD, and so Prezi does not work. <laughs> are you are, are you the only one like that out there? <laughs> Probably <laughs> not. Probably not. But I tend to, with Prezi, I tend to overload it with, oh, if this happens, we'll talk about this, and oh, if this happens, we'll go here. And I get distracted with, you know, Closing it down, looking, swinging through. Yeah, I get it. You know, <laughs> swinging through to find the thing that I posted on the pay on a section. So uh, during a workshop, I did a two-day workshop for a business, and it was a small deal. And I could use Prezi to kind of flip back and forth to points that I wanted to make that didn't have to be one after the other. You know, we I broke it into sections, but I could always go back, and that worked. But if we're only having an hour, we'd be we'd still be there with all the crap that I would have put in. <laughs> I wonder if it would work maybe best as a like an overview map that you could lay out and say we're going to cover these five or ten topics and draw them out on Prezi and say, you know, we can go in whatever order and and to allow it to be that more free form and everybody can see the big picture then and then you can zoom in and do each individual uh, yeah. topic and zoom back out. It, um, and maybe even not as, uh, maybe on something where it wasn't slide heavy, where you didn't have a lot of information to convey and you just wanted to give them that overview, um, that might be a good. Maybe with the rules, place. right? The small town rules. The problem with the rules that I have found is that um, that they are too linear. You know, they're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, I, could, I could see breaking it up, but I don't, I don't think that the Zoom would add anything to it. Mm -hmm. right. Maybe I'll go back and take another look at that now. I don't know. We got a lot of uh, reaction to rule number three. Yeah. yeah. Multiple lines of income. Is that rule number three? That is no yeah. rule number three. That's right. See, people do things like that to me. They say, yeah, we're doing something on rule number four and I have to go. <laughs> oh, yeah, four. Okay, yeah, I'm with you now. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, so Lori, next time you'll have to, you definitely have to join us because uh, I know that Becky brought some of her books with her and and uh, sold them out. And had we I sold out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so your your book next time. So maybe you can bring the bring some beauty queens with you. 
or pageants, ladies, not beauty queens. I can find them. <laughs> <laughs> not much <in touch> anymore. <laughs> how's the book? How's the book coming? Going? Doing? Um, it always surprises me when one sells. You know. <laughs> Well, that's <laughs> and then I think, oh gosh, now somebody's going to read it. <laughs> oh no, now they have it and they'll read it. Darn it! Read it. Oh. <laughs> I've gotten yeah. really good reviews though, and so that makes me happy. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Say that again. I said I got some really good reviews though, so I'm really happy. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, I need to get a copy of it. I just haven't. Uh, I'm just coming out of the fog of SM Tulsa, but I definitely want to read it. And um, I don't know, maybe you and I can do another hangout, and we can talk about the talk about the books. So, definitely, probably doesn't apply to me, but uh, <laughs> it applies for anybody. It's it's geared towards that niche, but anybody who wants to establish, establish their personal brand via social media, it would work for them. It's funny. Um, it's funny, when I first got to uh, Tulsa, not too long after I started social media Tulsa, Lori asked me to judge one of her pageants. And um, that was probably one of the more stressful things I've ever done. I, it, was, I, <laughs> it was very stressful for me as a judge to, uh, to, to pick. A, I mean, that was a very unique situation. I've never been in a, a situation like that. And, and felt really pressured to do the right, to pick the right person, right, to represent the brand, right. That was a that was a tough call. So I thank you for that challenging duty. You guys did great. <laughs> you did great. I think I still see some of the folks that were judges, uh, and that. And so we have a we have a, a common bond of sweating, <laughs> sweating the details. I don't think either. Of <laughs> I don't think any of us thought that being a judge would be the hardest part of the thing. The contestants all seemed so calm, and I'm sweating bullets. They weren't. <laughs> I have to drop out, but thanks very hey. much for letting me jump in. Hey, thanks for coming. We're gonna we're gonna wrap up here in a little bit, but I really appreciate you. Thank you for coming to Tulsa. Uh, hopefully, you put us on your calendar for 2014. I'll go check the date. I will. <laughs> you you can knock it away from us. At least, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a good right. event. Like I said, it's one of my favorites, so I'm happy to do it. Yay. Thanks, All right. Becky. All right. See you guys yeah. later. Bye.